it, it came about completely organically. I was invited to a, one of her uh, PowerPoint presentations about one of her, her second book, Incomparable Women of uh, Style, and um, didn't know anything about it. But the person who invited me had really, they had turned me on to some really cool stuff. And so I was like, I'll go check it out. Yeah. So I went, and I didn't know who Rose was at all. I just, um, I think you know what they probably te there was probably a picture of Bianca, and I and I knew that photo, which is generally everyone's kind of usual focal point. They know that one generally, and um, so when I walked out of the elevators at this place, they had they had like twenty blown up images of hers, you know, that had been transferred from negative, and they were from all eras, you know. There was fifty four, there was Linda Evangelista, there you know, it's just like the Betsy Johnson picture with her with the American flag. I knew every single one of the pictures of the photos. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I've been a spot director for 20 years, so uh, shooting commercials and, you know, uh, people like to do a lot of visual research and, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, being able to convey like, hey, my lighting is going to look like this or that or the other. So having gone through so much, uh, so many of the images over the years uh, working, working for other directors, I tend not to do as much research because I like to kind of um, go with my gut. But uh, yeah, I was kind of overwhelmed by knowing all of the pictures. And then she gave her PowerPoint, and when she was talking, I mean, when she was talking about specifically, like I remember the, talking about Andy, uh, Andy Warhol and Bianca. There's a black and white, and uh, you know, Andy Warhol's. You know, I'm too young for '54. He was kind of mythological for me because I was like 12 year old MTV generation when it, it when it, like when it was like you know two or three years old, and they were covering. Andy Warhol and Basquiat, and it kills me that nobody, his face flashes up in the film and nobody knows who Basquiat is. And when I found that photo in her collection, I was like, this has to be in the film. Um, so it was really cool. And then I really just, because I was kind of in that advertising head, I thought I might do a, a short little two minute thing with her, be a nice piece for my reel and um, help her sell her books. And then we went to lunch. <laughs> and, and there it became. We went to lunch. <laughs> we changed, cha we changed tables two times. Um, she had them change the music. Um, she had them change the temperature. She yelled at the people next to us to stop talking so loud. Uh, food didn't come fast enough, and I knew at that point, I've got a documentary here. Because that, you know, I don't know what people walk away with. I just hope they walk away ultimately being entertained and a little educated. But for me, and hopefully for others, this is a character study. So all of the other stuff is great and, and, and interesting, but what's the story? You know, you can say Studio 54 and you can name all these celebrities, but no. It's who she is, understanding her, why she has to, had to be that way to get those photos that are now... An indelible, an indelible part of pop culture that people don't realize comes from one, one little lady. A lot of people like it for entertainment value, but what they don't know, what sometimes comes out in, in Q&A after the films, is um, that was our first interview. I had shot her at Carolina Herrera, but not interviewed her yet. So it was my first, so I had my plan. Kind of wanted to go a little linearly. She didn't want to. She, I, like, and I understand now. Um, I mean, I was doing, you know, a lot of, you know, spots earlier on. But this is a story that I told and didn't watch any documentaries. Didn't. I mean, I really cut myself off so that I could really just try to, hopefully, make something that people would like based on my instinct and prove that I actually had what it took to tell a story and keep people's attention for at least seventy-one minutes. Um, so that was, that, that, that was, you know, I, I wanted to cover early childhood and of course she's like, she wants, she wants to come running out of the gates talking about the really crazy stuff. I don't know if I'm, should be cussing or not. So I'm, I'm, be, I'm being fine. I'm being nice. Um, uh, you can always believe me, but, uh, yeah, I, uh, I just got, uh, yeah. So anyway, that moment is completely organic and it is the moment that, I figured, we figured each other out, but I figured her out because I'm from the South. I'm polite by default, and Rose needs directness. Rose needs to be provoked. She needs to, 
she has this energy, but it's got it's got a balance. It's got a balance. So that really was when when you know this organic thing that started from nothing. And my biggest ambition at the time was to just get into South by Southwest. And then we just got invited to our twentieth festival after we have you know a theatrical run and we're award qualified. Uh, word season qualified, and uh, you know, it's just I I appreciate that. You did a brilliant job. I you know I I like it, so I love it. I want everybody to see it. So and I you know I I didn't need to. I, I liked it before it got into anything. I was proud of it before anything. You know, I, I knew the Times review would be coming out. The New York Times review. I know there's one. There's an impending L.A. Times review coming out, but the New York Times review is coming out, and everybody's freaking out. And I was right. like. You know, I'm not gonna worry if this person doesn't like my film. I mean, you know, from a financial and pragmatic perspective, of course I want to get a great review in the New York Times. But, uh, you know, maybe it was like the 10th film he was forced to see that day, and he's like another documentary about a photographer. You know, you just, you never know what some, what's going through someone's head. So I, I wasn't going to be devastated if he had panned the film um, because because I like it, because I'm satisfied with it, and it's the first thing I've been proud of in a very long time. 